You're here because the farmer back. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and also, you're, um, you've done a new documentary film called Casuals. We can see a clip of the documentary right now. Yeah. I've got a photograph in a book that I did of Liverpool fans looking at Arsenal fans, and they're like looking in the mirror. You know, and it's Lacoste, Adidas, uh, Tacchini, training shoes. Arsenal fans have all got flicks, you know, and it was just, you know. And it was, it was amazing, you know, and then when the media started picking up on it, then it started to be called casuals. But not everyone agrees that the casual movement originated in the northwest of England. Oh! Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's me posh scouse poster. <laughs> so where did, it, where did it start if it didn't start in the northwest? Or did it start in the northwest? It probably started in Italy, didn't it? Yeah. You know. <laughs> So what was the idea? What was the idea? Why, why well, did you put the documentary? Well, together? it all, all goes back to the end uh, magazine, really. You know, the the fact that um, yeah. it was all, all about football fashion, really, and terrace fashion, and that's what we tried to document. And that's it's the untold story, really. In, in casuals, it's, it it gets the story right, I think. You know. So which way round was it? Did football influence fashion, or was it fashionable to follow football? I think it, it, it's undoubtedly like uh, Liverpool being in Europe. I think there's no doubt about that because a lot of Liverpool fans took up on the training shoes abroad and different fashions, and I think they brought it back. And I think it's well documented that you know. And I think the Casuals DVD looks into that. So um, the football fans went over there, and then instead of just going to the pub all day, they went shopping. Well, I, I yeah, yeah. That's what that's what used to happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, I, th I think it's significant, there's, there's someone on the documentary called Wade Smith and he set up a shop. He realised the potential of this and he set up a shop. And Liverpool was the biggest selling city for Adidas and the whole world for like three years on the run, which is an amazing fact, you know, but that's in the DVD. Didn't you go hunting for a shop in Paris? You were there for the 81 yeah, yeah. final. I spent a week looking for the Adidas Centre, which was a mythical Adidas Centre. It didn't oh, exist. That's <laughs> a mythical shop. A mythical it's sport it's shop that you know, didn't yeah. exist. A week looking for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, like yeah. Well, we, well, we were looking for the Palace of Versailles as well. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't make does it? No. <laughs> but look, One what did you have to have then to be a, an accepted casual? Like, well, a, if you're a mod, you've got to have a parker. Haven't you? So uh, yeah, we've got some pictures here. You can talk us to them and tell us, is this a... Yeah, I never, I was never really into the sports game myself, you know, but... Um, OK, you, know. these, you aren't going to like any so of these, then. <laughs> <laughs> this is, this, to, to, me, to me, this is more of a London fashion, you know, really. Oh, really? OK. It wasn't really a Liverpool fashion. I mean, people did wear Feeler and Lacoste and that type of thing, but that was definitely... A, a London Pringle. thing, is it? The Pringle? Pringle? I thought people played golf was, in that, wasn't it? Pringle was a London thing, well, oh, golfers okay. thing, wasn't it? It was a Harry, Red, Harry Redknapp thing. So wasn't? all these pictures Harry. that we've got, and but you love these? Yeah, yeah, they're my favourite trainers, Hugh Stan Smith, and that's why I've got a pair on today. Yeah. So <laughs> product it? placement, it's called. <laughs> to be accepted as a proper... Put on my own. To be accepted as a proper casual, what did you have to have in your wardrobe? Uh, well, I had a decent pair of training shoes, I would have thought, and a nice pair of jeans, and probably a cagoule. You know, yeah, uh, yeah nice <laughs> Peter Storm cagoule, you know. I know that worked for a few years. It certainly it went into the mountaineering look, you know, and it's all documented in the end magazine, you know, but yeah. it, like, it, it documents it quite well, you know. Um, and the, the end magazine, um, was that just exclusively in and around Liverpool? Yeah, it was, but lots of people from all around the country used to write in. The more we took the Mickey out of Leeds fans, the more they wanted it, you know. We had a uh, story called the uh, Fashion Crazy Yorkshireman, and they absolutely loved it. And when the farm ended up playing at Leeds, I thought they'd all come to beat me up. But they were all saying, oh, we love the magazine and we love the group, you know. And you were really involved in the, the start of the magazine? Yeah, yeah, we st I started the magazine. I wanted a magazine which concentrated on uh, football and music, really, you know, which hadn't been done before. It was before football fanzines, really, and uh, before Loaded and all that type of culture. So are you responsible for that whole thing? I'm not... Uh, I'm not, not uh, responsible for Loaded no, in no, a bad no, way, no, but it was just, I just wanted to... Uh, <laughs> I just wanted to have a magazine which I thought was funny, you know, and w would reflect mm. humour and what people talk about in pubs, you know. Yeah. And John Bishop's took all my jokes now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing really well. Oh, I'm um, right, now the farm broke up in 96, you are back. Yeah. Uh, 20th yeah. anniversary tour from April. We've got your fixtures hopefully going fixtures? across the bottom of the screen. Yeah, there they all are. Fixtures. <laughs> um, how's it been uh, back in the band? You've sort of done some gigs. Yeah, we did a few gigs before Christmas. Absolutely uh, fantastic gigs with Mick Jones from The Clash. And that was for uh, Hillsborough Awareness. It was called the Justice Night Tour. And um, we had support all around the country, like um, Manic Street Preachers turned up in Cardiff, um, Primal Screen turned up in London, and Hang unbelievably... On. Turned up? 
Yeah, yeah, to, to play, to play, to to oh, play class songs with The right. Farmer and oh, Mick right, Jones, brilliant. you know. Because we did a few farm songs, did a few Pete Wiley songs. Pete Wiley was there as well. And uh, then we did about 10, 12 class songs. So it's called Justice Tonight. Mm. And then um, amazingly in, in Manchester, the Stone Roses who were Man Manchester United fans. Oh. It's an absolutely brilliant gesture, I think. And like, tra some things transcend football. Yeah. And that was one of them. And they turned up and that's the first time they've been on stage for 15 years, you know. It was um, Ian Brown and John Squire, and they liked it so much that they come back the next week to Liverpool to see it again. He said, we well, were just blown away by it, you know. So, so this is the first time that you've done like a proper tour tour yeah, in Yeah, this is the first time years. the farm have done a yeah. proper tour. Well, everyone's reforming, aren't they? So we thought, we'd yeah. make, you know, the Happy Mondays reformed Stone Rose in Sparrow yeah. Carpet. So you just fancy it because everyone else is... Yeah, it's, it's, it's one of those. The original album, we, 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 um, we decided that after the Justice Tonight tour, you know, that we actually don't hate each other, other anymore, <laughs> yeah. you know? Yeah. Did, you for a, did you for a while? Well, you know, you? you'd end up touring America and you're on a tour bus for six weeks. Oh, it's terrible, lads, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you end up touring and then, you, you know, we couldn't play Sabutio in America because they didn't have the pitches and that, so... Uh, <laughs> right, it's so it was important. one of those things where you, you think to yourself, uh, you know, it, it, we just gradually drew, you know, drifted apart, really, you know.